Thank you. I'm not sure one of my kind would have done for you what you did for me. I did not expect a show of mercy. I hoped, but you could have just as easily left me to my fate. I didn't do it for you. I did it because it was the right thing to do. I don't understand it, but I'm glad you did. Now that we're safe on your ship, I think you were right to bring her. Things seem a little different now than they did in the heat of battle. There's more than one way to deal with messy situations. You're not mad that I didn't release Atasca from her situation? After all the trials we'd survived, maybe there's more room to hope for Atasca than I thought. surprises here, but your shoulders separated. If you come with me to sick bay, I can get you fixed up in no time. Uh, thank you. I'll find you afterwards. You two, check in at your stations. This thing isn't over yet. Escape pod. Not that I want another ride like that anytime soon. Tell me, did any crew from the Zelti survive? Well, since the Lydian ships have no escape pods, I think it was just us. I see. That's all. I had a partner on board. After this mission, she and I were meant to. All that matters now is making the Takan pay for what they've done. We'll stop them. I promise. You're really making us proud out there, Diaz. The lower decks don't get a lot of glory. I'm just getting started. Hey, Diaz. Yeah? Did you see our people over there? Miranda? Kapoor? Hauser? We saw Miranda and Kapoor, but they're bioformed. And as far as I know, there's no way to undo it. That means they're not our friends anymore. If they attack us? We'll have to stop them. No matter what it takes. Yeah. I, I guess we have to be ready for that. I can't believe it, but I'm actually looking forward to seeing Chobok. Not that I'd expect this kind of welcome from him, but I can just imagine the look on his face. Oh, come on, he's gotta give us some credit for all we've done. We'll see. Then again, if he doesn't, that's just Chobok being Chobok. I can't believe it! You evaded the Takan! Ejected their warp cores and lived to talk about it. That about sums it up. They're gonna be teaching this at the academy for years to come. I mean it. Everybody's gonna learn how you pulled it off. Yeah, when they do, make sure they get my name right D I A Z. Diaz. It's a loss, too. I'm sure no one will forget. I heard about Bell. Is Miranda? As far as we know, she's still out there. Well, I know Captain Rydek will do her best to get her back. Hold on. Rydek? What about Captain Solano? 
He was turned into a Takan. Rydek had to take over. She's a hell of an officer, but none of us have been up against anything like this. No one has. Not in half a million years. I guess there's never a dull moment around here, huh? You're telling me it's not always like this? Not if we can help it. <clears throat> Talk to you later. It is agreeable to see you again. Is that so? It was by no means a certainty that you would return to duty here. No, it was not. But it was my sincere hope you would. It is agreeable to see you as well, sir. I concur. You should know your absence has left engineering terribly short-handed. During your sojourn, this department has fallen unacceptably behind schedule. On both regular and irregular duties. There's been a whole lot of irregularity going around. Seems like you could use some help around here. We're ready to go to work. I'd like to catch my breath for at least a few minutes, Carter. Normally, I would assign you to one of the many pressing repair tasks. But, given your experience on board the Zeldi, I have suggested you join the senior staff briefing as we determine our next course of action. You can commence your maintenance shift afterwards. I tended to an Illidian earlier. Major Sarlet Arminta? Ah, uh, yes. I met him at the negotiations. I never would have imagined I'd be here, on the same ship, working together with our oppressors. But now that I am, I can imagine a future where the Hotari and Illidians are no longer enemies. I always hoped for peace, but it seemed so far away. There's still a lot of bad blood. Maybe too much. Well, if there's any way I can help, let me know. I'll take you up on that. It's good to have the support of a Starfleet captain, I'm sure. Oh, that's coming along nicely. Thank you, Tylus. I'll take it from here. We're almost done. I have to brief Ambassador Spock in a few minutes. Ambassador Spock can wait. You have some fences to mend. Personally, I'm against the needless destruction of innocent life forms. So I'm glad you transported the Taconian crystals onto the ship. But Lieutenant Bedrosian obviously feels otherwise. And right now, you need the full support of your bridge fleet. Being an effective leader requires trust. But an issue as divisive as this could create discord. I still need and value contrary opinions. I don't want everyone agreeing with me when they feel otherwise. Oh, you'll know when Lieutenant Bedrosian doesn't agree with something. He's not shy about making her opinion known. It's been a chaotic last few days for everyone. You need to name a new first officer in preparation for what's coming. You'll have to work to regain Lieutenant Bedrosian's trust, but if she's removed from consideration, it comes down to Westbrook or Ermot. Obviously, there are pros and cons with each, but ultimately, the decision is yours. Commander Westbrook has seniority and was hoping to be Captain Solano's first officer. Ermot has the knowledge and experience that makes him more than qualified. You really couldn't go wrong with either of them. At the moment, I am leaning toward selecting Commander Westbrook as the new first officer. That would be an excellent choice, considering your history. The crew would respect the fact you chose someone likely to challenge your opinions and present a different point of view. You're as good as new. Thank you, Dr. Duvall. Always nice to have a captive audience. Really shouldn't keep Ambassador Spock waiting. Captain. I'll meet you inside. I'm here to officially tender my resignation from the crew of the USS Resolute. 
I cannot in good conscience continue to serve aboard this ship. Not while the interests of the enemy take precedent over the safety of the crew. Lieutenant, we both know how much we need your help and expertise for the coming conflict. I have no one to replace you. I understand, Captain. And I apologize. But my heart is not in it any longer. And to stay would be a disservice to us both. My door is always open if you change your mind. I appreciate that. We'll have Ambassador Spock via subspace shortly. Thank you, Mr. Armand. I'll notify Lieutenant Bedrosian we're about to begin. That won't be necessary. Petty officers Diaz and Edsalar have first-hand experience with our adversaries. I thought it advantageous for them to join this briefing. I understand this is unusual, but I trust you have no objections. Talk about moving up in the world. Not that I'm surprised in the least. Excellent idea, Mr. Chovak. They deserve to be here. In all seriousness, what Diaz and Edsalar accomplished aboard the Zeldi is nothing short of remarkable. They're both to be commended, not only for surviving against incredible odds, but for helping our efforts against these Scions. You know, Carter deserves most of the credit. None of us would have made it without his help. We'd all be bioformed by this point. Well, I could say the same thing about Edsalar here. She deserves as much of the credit as I do. It's like a mutual admiration society. Ambassador Spock is ready for you. Put him through. Captain Rydick, your recent change in station certainly warrants mention, and I trust you to faithfully execute your expanded duties. Right now, we must keep our attention on the clear and present danger that lies ahead, the Takan and their warship. The closest populations are the Hotari and Elidian systems, and they are likely the first targets for mass bioforming. After that, lies Federation space. I have advised Starfleet Command to send an impromptu battle group to intercept and assist you, but that will take time. You are our first line of defense. And with our shield algorithms compromised, we are at a great disadvantage. Of course, you know that as well as I do. With respect, Ambassador, sending more ships only opens us up to more casualties. The Aphelion's purpose is bioforming on a massive scale. The risk to a battle group is too high. Your concern is valid, and I will forewarn the battle group before they arrive. But the greater risk would be in failing to stop the Takan. Remember, our strength is drawn from our ability to work together towards a common goal. Have we made any progress in finding a way to defend ourselves from the Aphelion's bioforming weapon? Currently, our shields will not protect us, but I am compiling all of the information the away team gathered on the Zeldi and cross-referencing it against our own, as well as Portal 6-3's methods. The away team is sitting right here. They survived without getting bioformed, so we know it's possible. So, what's the secret? How do we defend ourselves? Is there a weakness we can exploit? Something we can do to avoid getting bioformed. I wish I could tell you the solution. But the truth is, there is no easy answer. There's no defense against bioforming. One-on-one -on -one or on a mass scale. And at least, not that I know of. Hmm. We may not be able to stop it, but it might be possible to slow it down. It's too soon to say for sure, but... We've had some promising indications that Deridium can delay the bioforming process. Deridium? It's not a cure. It's not going to bring anyone back we've already lost. But Deridium is a cell stabilizer, so it has the potential to slow down the onset of physical and mental changes, if not entirely prevent them. And might be the only ship in the fleet with this much Deridium on hand. In fact, a lot of ships wouldn't have any. I'll forego the rest of my treatments, if it means the crew will be safe. Captain, you'd die. That's an honorable intention, but it's not that simple. It requires a much larger dose to be effective. 
We don't have enough duridium on board to protect the whole crew. We barely have enough to protect everyone in this room. Sounds like it won't do us much good then. The use case I'd suggest is that we could buy a little time for an officer or a small group to complete a task or mission. But it has to be taken at the moment of exposure to the bioforming mechanism. Prepare a delivery method for this remedy. That raises the question, what is the mission? Assuming the Aphelion uses shields of some kind, I don't expect it will be easy to bypass their defenses. We may not be able to block the Aphelion's attack either. But if they do strike, we know their weapon uses transporter technology. We might be able to backtrack their signal path. Like we did to evacuate Captain Rydeck from Tau. Exactly. We could send an away team onto the Aphelion. So we could destroy it from the inside. I'm not exactly sure how, but that's the idea. So it's like jujitsu. We use their attack and turn it against them. That's the idea. We'll keep thinking on it. I'd rather not have to take a direct hit to punch back. There might be some other way we can turn their strength into a weakness. We'll need to prepare a boarding party, if it comes to that. Petty Officers Edsilar and Diaz are the logical choices to lead any away mission to the Aphelion. They have already crippled one enemy ship. If anyone can do so again, it is them. This isn't like the engineering mission that took you to the Zeldi. Do you really have some special insights that a tactical team wouldn't? Doesn't the fact that we're here speak for itself? Just surviving won't be enough this time. Sabotage is kind of becoming our specialty. We'll find a way to get the job done. Well, he certainly has the swagger for it. If this is the necessary course of action, I support it. With the help of Portal, he should be part of the away team. I will compile all the latest data on the tricorders, just in case. In the meantime, I want you working on ways we can combat the Tacon tech. Shields, weapons, anything we can use. Yes, Captain. Anything else, Ambassador? I know this matter is in capable hands. Hold the line as best you can. Help is on the way. Thank you. I have faith in all of you to meet this moment with the urgency it requires. I expect all of us to give it everything we've got. Thank you, Petty Officers Diaz and Edsilar. You're dismissed. While we have a quorum of senior staff, there is a procedural element we need to take care of. The Resolute command codes must be transferred to Captain Ryak for control of the ship. Of course. Computer, transfer all command codes to Captain Jara Ryak. Voice authorization, Ermon, Echo 4 Lima. Voice authorization, Duval, Beta 2, Yankee. Voice authorization, Westbrook, Alpha 7 Tang. Awaiting your authorization, Captain. Voice authorization, Rydek, Charlie, five, Whiskey. Captain's codes transferred. The updated command structure is incomplete. Please designate a new first officer. Who is the new first officer? Please designate a new first officer. It is an honor and a pleasure to name Commander Westbrook as my new first officer. Thank you, Captain. You made the right choice. Congratulations, Commander. It's long overdue. I know we've had our differences, but I can't tell you how much I appreciate this.
Computer, Commander Westbrook is the new first officer of the USS Resolute. Awaiting voice authorization. Voice authorization, Westbrook. Alpha 7 Tango. Authorization is now complete. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's work to be done. Nicely done. I think that went well. Captain, could I have a word with you? Give me a minute. Look, I respect your decision, Captain. Commander Westbrook has seniority, and I can understand why you might have felt pressure to promote him. But what I can't understand is why you would choose someone so clearly unsuited for the position. It's the very reason why Captain Solano chose you over him. Because he knew Westbrook, as first officer, would be disastrous. I won't argue with you about it. You very well might be right. But I had to trust my instincts, and that's what led me to Commander Westbrook. He may have been the expected choice, but that doesn't make him the best. Maybe I've had it wrong this whole time. But I thought we'd had an excellent working relationship almost from the moment you first arrived. You trusted me with the information about Captain Solano being compromised, and I trusted you in return. In fact, I've always supported you, which is certainly more than you can say about Westbrook. He was always against you, especially with regard to Captain Solano. But I guess loyalty counts for nothing with you. Listen, I value your opinion more than just about anyone's. I rely on it. And if we're going to beat Galvin, I'll need your help now more than ever. So please, don't be discouraged. I'll be fine. Just give me some time. in engineering. I can't raise them. Internal comms are down. It's the ionic interference. It's spiking again. If we reinitialize the central communications trunk, it should compensate. If I may, Captain. Communications are critical to ship operations. I should go take care of this. Go. I was hoping we could buy enough time until staff could send more ships. It looks like we might have to face off against the Aphelion sooner than we might want. If it's just us, I don't like our chances. We can't fight them on their terms. We have to be clever. I would let you escape so easily after taking what's mine? How pathetic and predictable. At least you can take solace knowing you'll be a far braver to calm than you were as a cowardly Cobliad. Is it any wonder your people perished? If your every instinct is to run from a fight, you underestimate the lengths I'm willing to go to ensure you don't succeed. Sadly, this is as far as you'll get. We both know I hold your fate in the palm of my hand. That I could crush you in an instant if I so desired. And as much as I'd like to, you have another purpose to serve. As one of us.
next section. No systems or structural damage, though. They were targeting the crew, not the ship. Captain, we have to respond. Hit him in the mouth. What are your orders? Fire phasers. Target the source of the beam. The Aphelion remains undamaged by the phasers, Captain. And its shields are fully intact. It's too powerful to take head on. Damage report from the lower decks. I still can't raise them, Captain. Could be that the system's down. Well, that was the Takan bioforming ray. And there's no one left down there to respond. The Takan may already be on this ship. No way of knowing how bad it is yet. Seal the bridge. No one gets access without my permission. I think that's for the best. Here are your new tricorders. Now go. Get to the transporter. Transporter room one. You're coming with us? A security officer told me your funeral, which I gladly accepted. These are concentrated iridium doses. You need to take the dose as soon as you're exposed for it to be effective. Now, take it right before if you can get into contact. Wait for I'm having trouble locking onto the transporter path through the interference. I've done this before. I have to align the transporter with the tetrametric signature. We need to tunnel through the shields. Problem. We don't have enough power to make the jump. I might be able to divert power from the side. The signal is now resolved. I couldn't let you fumble about any longer. Time is running short. Thanks for that. No need. We must be on our way. 
I am Portal 63, guardian of the Con Empire. Nice to meet you, uh, Portal. We're right behind you. Do us proud over there. Ready to transport. On your order. Energize. It's almost a shame we have to scuttle it. The galaxy has never seen a ship like this. It is beautiful. I'll give you that. Resolute, come in! We're losing cohesion. I'm gonna try to use my tricorder. The pattern enhances it. Time to mourn. We have to get to the Cartabula and disable it. Hopefully before the battle group shows up. We get served up for the Aphelion's next meal. I am saturated in Taconian power readings. I can't feel the source just yet. This way. I can't reach anyone. At least not on the lower decks. It's like they're all... gone. The comm systems seem to be operational again. That bioforming ray may have transformed dozens of crew members on the lower decks. This ship could be swarming with resurrected Takan. It's only a matter of time before they come to their senses and take action. Which means we have a narrow window of time to cut them off. down the affected areas immediately. Close the bulkheads and erect the containment fields. No one is allowed to in or out without my authorization. There could be crew members who aren't affected who could get locked inside. That's a risk we'll have to take. Initiating a lockdown now. And what happens if some of the bioforms manage to escape? How should the crew engage them? Or should they? We don't want suspicion to run rampant. Captain Solano had a favorite proverb from Earth. Trust but verify. Everyone should assume we're all on the same side. But at the same time, they should watch for anything abnormal. Have we heard anything from Commander Ermot? No. And he's been gone for quite some time. The comm system he went to investigate. It's near the affected area. Lost. 
Commander Ermot. Commander Ermot, can you hear me? Computer shutdown initiated. According to this, it was initiated by Commander Ermot. What? The central computer core will shut down in 10 minutes. We'll lose all critical ship functions. It can only be overridden by the captain and the core itself. With me. Stop! Identify yourselves! We're just trying to figure out what's happening. To hell with it. Captain Rydek, it's me, Commander Ermot. First Officer Westbrook insisted I find you immediately. Let me get this door open. I think I remember the code. I hope you haven't been hurt, Captain. It's not safe here. I'll get you somewhere more secure. Just about. Captain. Do anything rash. Time to fight and a time to admit defeat. Hear me out. Listen to reason. There's no need to do anything impulsive. You just tried to kill me, you 
was only acting on orders. We didn't mean any harm. We know we'd rather have you with us. We can make a deal, right? Come to terms. Shutdown. Voice authorization, Rydek. Charlie. Five. Whiskey. Termination sequence canceled. These are the arteries of power coming from the Cotabula at the heart of the Aphilion. I can feel it coursing through my own body. Look there. I cannot move as freely inside this ship. Those emitters are why. If they were deactivated, I could travel past this chamber without setting foot in it. Only Takan can use Takan technology. How do I turn them off? Place these on the emitters. It will suppress their effect. The guards, none the wiser. Got it. I'm coming, too. If we both get caught, it's over. If it's just me, you can try again after I fail. Well, then, don't screw it up.
that. Get out of here. More emitters. Guess we can't teleport the rest of the way. That craft can take us to the main power chamber. No way we can make that jump. When I was younger, maybe. Huh. 
This might control that craft. Portal, a little help? I should be able to bring it to us. Things set to maximum stun. How are they getting up? Something's different about the Takan here. Stunning isn't an option. Got hit. out of the ship. Shoot the pilot! Ancestors! 
How do you stand with them? We've left them behind. I've seen it with my own eyes. They're not real, Takara. We were conquerors, not parasites. The souls I pushed your captain to spare will not be used for this end. You are the last real Takan. Don't let them tarnish that with what they're doing. Because if we don't stop the Scions of the Flame, they will be the legacy of your people. Never. That's the attitude. 